how good is that view? That right there is the Yalwool region of New South Wales. Now, the boys and I are amped about this because we've each picked a natural wonder that exists in this region and we're gonna share it with the others. But of course, we haven't told each other which one we've chosen. Mine, <laughs> it's an absolute cracker. I can't wait to show the boys. To get there, of course, we're not gonna take the blacktop. We've chosen some of the hardest, most low range, steep, rutted, nasty tracks we can find. Folks, sit down, buckle up and enjoy because this is gonna be one heck of a ride. If you're into tough four-wheel driving and epic campsites, then this is the video for you. And I've also got cracking news too. Get 10% off store-wide at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter. That's 10% off winches, spotlights, and heaps more gear. Just keep an eye out for the exclusive discount code in this video. And of course, enjoy the adventure. During this trip, we won't be taking a straightforward A to B because we're gonna be tackling the best tracks in the Yalwood area in order to access each of our chosen natural wonders. We've got all our waypoints marked on the Hema, so really it's up to us to how tough we make it to get to each of these waypoints. First up is Steve's Natural Wonder, and I reckon this is going to be pretty good fun. This looks like us. Christmas Bush Track. Lads, this is us. Christmas Bush Track. Straight off the blacktop and into it. Brett, eh? How's the big four going, mate? I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> like an absolute freight train, mate. Been a couple of long nights in the shed, but she's going like a champion. That's good to hear, mate. Good to hear. You, you would have done a fair bit down here, yeah? Yeah, I've done a couple of trips down here. It's an awesome part of the world. Real picturesque part of the world. Speaking of picturesque, how you doing back there with the trailer, mate? Steve, eh? Mate, good as gold. Loving it. Good stuff, boys. Now, listen, I know I gave you all a bit of homework to do before we came out here. Pick one of the natural wonders that are in this area, which is a pretty easy task. It's full of natural wonders. You're both pretty confident? Absolutely, mate. Yeah, blokes, I've got an absolute pillar. I'm not even going to spoil the surprise, but you're going to want to check this one out. Well, I did a fair bit of research on mine, and I reckon it doesn't matter what you two have chosen, because I'm going to pull the rabbit out of the hat. Mine is an absolute corker. Well, mate, I've stopped and done a bit of fishing on the way down here with the tinny, and the theme's not going to change, and you're going to be so sorry you didn't bring a fishing rod. All right, boys, we're talking the talk. Let's get into this, see if we can walk the walk. Let's hit it. Sounds good. Yep, that track just drops away there. Tell you what, I'm just going to go first gear low and just ease over the edge of this. It's truth, Bruce. If that continues, we're going to have to air down pretty soon, I think. Steve's been giving me a heap of directions over the UHF in order to reach his natural wonder, but I reckon he's probably wondering oh, if the tracks he's picked are still going to be trailer friendly because this rain is really starting to set in. Sure do, mate. What's happening? Oh, just a little hill in front, mate. I'm just taking my time scrambling my way up. How's the forerunner going? Have you got any work done on it lately, mate? Mate, am I ever not working on this thing? New cooling system, bigger radiator. It's got a um, engine fan off a Mercedes Sprinter fitted up to the front of the engine now. Rebuilt the rear diff. I uh, blew the LSD in half and uh, completely rebuilt it. Did a disc brake conversion to the rear. And about a million other little things as well. Mate, can I reframe my question? Can I, can I ask you, is there anything you haven't done to your truck? <laughs> nah, good question there. I don't think there is, to be honest. Watch yourself on these rocks here, uh, Stephen. Looks like the rain stopped for now, but this track is definitely getting tougher. Hey, Steve, are you copy back there, mate? Yeah, you gotcha, mate. Mate, I don't want to start casting aspersions in your direction, but are you sure this is the right way? Yeah, it should. According to the Hemer, it is, mate. So, yeah, we should be going the right way. All right, well, wait till you see what's in front of me. <laughs> We're about to decrease in altitude. Yeah, that's one bit I was worried about, the contour lines, but no, we'll have a look. Should be all right. I think I've been into the Yalwell area now three, maybe four times, and I reckon it's one of the quintessential four-wheel drive areas in Australia. You see, it's got pretty much everything. The water down here too. You've got creek crossings, you've got rocky ascents and descents, but you've also got some of the nicest camping you could possibly have. It really is a bit of a four-wheel drive paradise. Have a look at this creek bed down here. This has actually become our main junction for the trip because there's about five exits all spearing off it in different directions and each one of them takes you to another track. Hey Steve, how are you going back there with that trailer mate? 
Oh, if I can drag it over these tree roots and things, I should be right, mate. Well, your next challenge is in front of you too, because we've got that steep, slippery climb back out of here, mate. I'll give it a go. I'll just wait down there. I'll let you know what it's like. This initial exit we're taking out of here is actually not too bad. It's really steep. And I actually remember coming down here once before where it was so wet, you physically couldn't walk up it. Nah, she's good, mate. She's good. No problem at all. Come on up. All right, we'll make it interesting. I'll do it without blockers. It's not too bad today though, and as you can see, a little bit of mumbo, and we're crawling out of there no problem at all. Steve in the big Ilux, he never holds back. Look at him go straight up that. No drama at all, mate. Good drive. Now, Breno was in a bad position here. He just had to line himself up for that exit, <laughs> but he wasn't expecting what happened next. For those of you at home, keep an eye on the rear window. Ah. Oh. That stings. The bush has bitten back. Poor old Breno was just reversing the, the big forerunner in order to get into a better position for this hill over here. And he hasn't seen this perfectly situated stick. <laughs> mate. <laughs> Bad luck, mate. Oh. It's gone straight through the rear window, but it's not the end of the world. Breno's actually got another whole window assembly, haven't you? The whole tailgate at home, it's all right. Got the whole thing at home. Not that you want to use it, but he has got a spare. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is just put a bit of cardboard around that, block up that hole so it doesn't get dust in the back. We'll carry on. The basics of this fix are pretty simple. We're not going to do anything too elaborate here, really. We're going to knock out the majority of the glass, and of course, we're going to pick that glass up. There's nothing worse than seeing glass left behind in the bush. We're then going to tape it up with a bit of cardboard, and the primary reason for that is to keep it all together so that that glass doesn't fall out anymore, but also stops dust and debris sucking back up and into the rear of the truck. Well, with those running track side repairs, I say we attempt the infamous hill out of here. Let's hope everything doesn't hit the back of this and land out the back. And no more reversing the trees? Let's try. Or some, some more reversing the trees. If you, no, 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 no more. No, that's all we needed, just that one. No worries, look, okay. I'll just clean up here and... Next time you try and get firewood, mate, I'll show you how to do it more conventionally. <laughs> here, out bag. <laughs> right up, let's do this. Thank you, mate. Nice and easy, blokes. Look at him go, that rear window hasn't held Brendan up one bit, mate. Look at that, foot to the floor and straight up there. You know, Breno's put that four runner through the wars over the years, but it's still doing the number and, oh man, how good does it sound? Alrighty, we've all made it out of that creek bed more or less in one piece and now we're following Steve's directions and making a mile. Judging by the hema and the general direction in which we've been heading for half a day, I reckon I know roughly where Steve's leading us and it definitely involves water. This next little section that we came upon is the sort of track that I reckon I could drive all day long. It is so much fun and I just love tackling these sort of things in old shorty. You got some flex happening there, baby. Yeah, mate, there's just enough slop on this track to make it tricky. And my locker, my rear locker, oh, there we go. It's just flicked in. It's taking about three times longer than usual, but it's working. The washaways here in places were literally waist deep, but it was pretty easy just to slowly crawl through, pick a line, and have an absolute blast doing it. Now, old shorty, she doesn't flex that well. I'll be the first to admit it, but check it out going through this initial part here. For a truck that I reckon doesn't flex that well, that raw suspension is working an absolute treat. Now a track like this, or an obstacle I should say, such as this, really is 99% wheel placement. Get it wrong, you're going to put your truck on its side, it's as simple as that. But get it right, you're going to walk through and make it look easy. Your tow bar is actually hitting the ground. Yeah. I need to go over to the left a bit, so I'm struggling with traction, that's all. Check out the difference it makes when I engage that rear locker. Yeah, look at that. Picks up a bit of a wheel. That was inevitable, it was going to happen. But see how much easier it is. That's just rear locker engaged. I was lacking right boot. Graham, I might get you to just help me out with a bit of a spot here. I think I've got my line picked. Right on, mate. Up at the top. Hang on. I'm not concerned one bit for the Hilux. That would walk through here, bigger tyres, big wheelbase. It's a heck of a capable truck. What I'm concerned about is bringing that trailer through in one piece, so that's what I'm going to be keeping my eye on. Yeah, and as you can see in this instance right here, the trailer would have made it through, but that rut is just ever so slightly too deep. So what that means is the toolbox up the front is going to cop the brunt of it before he pulls himself up and out. So let me have a bit of a look here, mate, because I might have to do a bit of road building because you're... Uh... 
The vehicle's in a perfect spot, but the trailer, because it's so low on this front side down here, is hitting the bank. Pretty simple solution, really. Get him to reverse back and just pack that hole. What does that do? Well, tyres then right up on those rocks and it clears that toolbox and allows him to drive through. Again, I'm not concerned one bit for the Hilux. That's working perfectly. All I'm taking care of is that trailer. Perfection. Perfect, mate. That's it, mate. You're out. Bruno, you're going to love this. Come on up, mate. You'll do this easily. Oh, I cannot wait, boys. Righto, Steve's through, no damage done. Now, it's time for crazy man Breno. That's a ballsy line, mate. <laughs> I was further to the right. Taking the dog for a walk. How did you dig that hole? How'd it work? Yeah, we dug that a bit for you, mate, yeah. Struth, Breno, you want to lay her on a side or what, mate? <laughs> that was close. Struth, Breno. <laughs> I thought that might have been over for a second there. I went a bit higher on this one, mate, on the right-hand side, but you know your truck, because she really dips down there, but no, you've got it. Beautifully done. Whoa! Bro. <laughs> mate, does this thing lift wheels or what? It's truth, mate. I think a little diamond came out downstairs. Well, those ruts were really only an introduction, <laughs> because that is not the end of things. This track is just getting worse. What I'm really concentrating on here, of course, is trying to keep old Shorty as straight as possible because where we could lean on that earlier section of track, if we do so here, we're going to hit these banks on either side and that means panel damage. Yeah, you can see how slippery it is right there, but the main problem right there is that great big tree root. And I think I'm just going to have to try and bounce myself ever so slightly up and over that. Yeah, there you go. Didn't need much, like I say, just a little bit more mumbo. I'm not talking a heap. Just bounce that front up and over, and we're good to go. Would I be able to go get my left wheel up on, on that side and do it that way? You can try, mate. There's not much here, and I'm concerned you'll slip off and do panel damage because there's a big root that comes down right about here. Steve's up, and once again, I'm not so concerned about the Lux. I know that'll drive this piece of pie. Keeping my eye on the trailer, and I reckon that tree root is going to be the only issue he might have. Yeah, 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 you can, come, you can come right over this side if you feel more comfortable doing it. Yeah, and then I thought I'd drive around that um, tree root. And come up the top of this? Yep. All right, let's give it a go. That's it, that's it. Keep it coming on that line, mate. Now as he comes up through here, you can really see how slippery it is. Once again, those big muddies are just churning, looking for traction. That's it, keep driving, drive, drive, drive. You're gonna have to, I think you're gonna have to pop it up, mate. He's made it through that pretty easily, but I think the trailer is gonna be the bit that gives us the strife. Hang on, go back and I'll pack that, I'll pack the rear up for you for the trailer. Look at the concentration on Steve's face. <laughs> that is gold, mate. Good yeah, driving. Trailer up. Tree root. Oh, easy. Now, Bruno, I reckon you should probably jump out of there before we get going, mate. <laughs> you safe, Bruno? Yep. Right, mate. Slowly, slowly. That's it, Steve. Nice and gentle. That's it, mate. You can see what a difference those rocks make. The trailer just walked up that. Easy. All the way up, mate. Momentum. Tidy work, mate. Tidy work. Renate, you'll make this look easy. Or you'll tip over. Yeah, one way or the other. No going by halves. OK, it's time for Renault. Come on up, buddy. I thought he had it then. I thought he was going to crawl directly up and over that tree root, but it's caught Breno out as well. 
I'll just try crawling the left first and see if I can get that. Now there is a there is a bit of a sharp rock. I'll just show you where it is, mate, because you are going to head over to the left. I don't think you'll hit it. No, you won't hit it. You can come right over if you can. There's a sharp rock just here. Just going to have to come up that bank fractionally, and I reckon he'll drive that no worries at all. Yeah, look at that. Look at that perfect line. Oh, too easy. Well done. <laughs> nice work, boys. Top stuff. Beautiful thing. With those awesome challenges behind us, Steve has just come over to the UHF and he's let us know his natural wonder isn't too far away. And what an amazing choice he's made. Get a load of this, the Shoalhaven River. It's just a stunning part of the world. The towering sheer sandstone cliffs of the lower Shoalhaven Gorge are considered to be one of the most beautiful places of natural beauty in Australia, especially after it gets a bit of rain with just dozens of waterfalls coming over those majestic cliffs. Steve, you've nailed it, mate. This is a cracking spot. Well, this stunning bit of real estate is the Shoalhaven River, but more to the point, this is Steve's natural wonder, mate. What a cracker. Mate, would you think I'd bring you anywhere where you couldn't fish? Have a look at the backdrop, though. Those cliffs, this river valley, absolutely stunning, mate. You wouldn't think it from up in the hills where we were that you could get a river of this magnitude down here. I'm blown away. Mate, they had a recent flood down here that the water level was probably 10 metres higher than we are now. <laughs> Get out of town. Yep. Stunning part of the country, mate. Really am impressed. We go, we go for a poke around the corner here. Let's see if we can find a bass. I'll let you go. We enjoyed that gorge for the rest of the afternoon. I mean, how couldn't we? But soon enough, it came time to head to camp, which for tonight was going to be right near Yalwal's Dan Dam. There's quite a few campsites down this way and they seem to each get a little bit higher than the other. Some have got views, some don't. Some are right down by the dam itself on the water. Others are right back up. We've sort of picked a middle of the line spot. Beautiful, flat, big area for all of us. And if you glimpse through the trees, <laughs> you can almost see the water. Magic. Well, you know what, this is my favourite time of day, especially after a day like we've had out on the tracks we've driven today. You know, Shorty is in her element in that terrain. Wheels in the air, all sorts of weird angles. I had an absolute blast. Now, check out this campsite. Perfect, right on the banks of Danjera Dam down there. One day, I'm gonna get here in the middle of summer, and have a whole day to myself. I'm gonna get down there and catch some monster bass. But for now, I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna help Steve-O set up the camper trailer, and then I'm gonna cook the boys my special spaghetti bolognese. Right now though, I think I might just take it all in. Absolute perfection. While the boys set up camp, I said I'd cook tonight. This one here, old spag bog, is a favourite of mine. You really can't get this wrong. Just throw a whole heap of ingredients in a pot, a couple of beers, lift the lid and serve it up. <laughs> if everyone's hungry, it's a good meal. That's been a cracking day, you know, and I'm really looking forward to tomorrow because tomorrow it's my go. And I reckon the boys are going to be blown away by my natural wonder. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with incredible deals on Adventure King's camping and outdoor gear. Take your camping experience to the next level with the amazing Grand Tourer Mark III aluminium rooftop tent. The rooftop tent that practically sets itself up. King's portable gazebos are built ultra strong with a tough steel frame, are easy to set up even by yourself and are available in multiple sizes for the campsite or the job site. The incredible new 270 degree freestanding awning can be set up in just 40 seconds and wraps around the side and the back of your car for incredible amounts of shelter. Hit the water on a King's inflatable stand up paddleboard for an insane amount of fun at the beach, the river or the dam, but warning it's highly addictive. Plus there's fridges, solar panels and more to make every adventure incredible. At Full Drive Supercenter, you get more for less. I love waking up in places like this. I mean, the air is so fresh right here near Dan Dam. We're getting a big hearty breakfast in because today we are going to have a cracker. It's my turn to show my natural wonder. I'll let you in on a bit of a secret. My natural wonder is actually pretty close to camp. You could probably even walk to it, but 
Where's the fun in that? <laughs> Instead, I've got a bit of a loop planned that isn't for the faint-hearted. In fact, it's so gnarly, we're going to drop the trailer off at tonight's camp before we even get into the tough stuff. Oh man, what a cracking track this is. You know what's going to be equally as cracking? It's my natural wonder. I put a bit of thought into it. I'm going to be honest with you, it's a little bit quirky. It's not quite what I think the boys are expecting. Got to say though, Steve's picked wisely. I thoroughly enjoyed that. We managed to get out of the boat and have ourselves a cracking day. It was an awesome experience. I've never been there before, of course. It really was something special. Oh, look at this track. This is champagne four-wheel driving. In case you can't tell, I'll live for this stuff. Absolutely love it. Little rock step. Yeah! <laughs> Shorty loves this. The kind of terrain that the short wheel base excels at. I'm so stoked. So excited about today. Excitement Woo! levels first thing in the morning are just insane. And look, I think this next challenge is really going to get the pulse going. Alrighty, well. Here we go, that bog hole, I don't know, it's touch and go. I reckon with enough momentum I could get through that, but I've seen bog holes that look half as bad as that. And I'm stuck there all day. I'm just gonna give this my best shot. Windows are up, because I've learnt the hard way before. Here we go. Oh, out of the splash zone. <laughs> Heading into this, low range of course, I'm in second gear, I've got a lot of poke in second gear in shorty, and I've got lockers on, I'm straightening up, hitting it as hard as I can. Now what I'm being really careful of here, is that I don't stray out of those ruts. Because I've got a bit of momentum behind me, a little bit of mumbo, I don't want to be getting sideways through there, so that's something I'm very conscious of. Now it's right about here, I thought I had it, and then I got that sinking feeling. I tried a little bit of forward and reverse, but no, as soon as I went forward again, I could just feel myself moving straight back down. So close. All yours, mate. Let's do this. Winch is all hooked up, and of course, safety number one. That winch of shorties, we put it through an absolute nightmare every time we go out, and it just keeps coming back for more. Hey? Yeah, 24 volt. Righto. I've made it through. The other blokes have seen just how tough it is. Steve's next with the trailer, and I reckon he's thinking he hasn't got a hope in heck, and he's probably right, but there's no way around this. To backtrack would take us hours. Hey, um, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. <laughs> Didn't make it anywhere near as far as I thought. I covered myself in mud. Oh, Ooh. come on, Steve. A bit of mud never hurt anyone, mate. As you can see, Steve's pulling oh, himself oh, out of there with oh, no oh, dramas oh. at all. Had he sat in that bog hole and just revved and revved, trying to go forward, could have gone down onto the diff. It makes it so much more difficult. Know your limitations. Know when you're stuck. Radio blokes, I'm on my way through. Woo Come on, forerunner, here you go, girl. All right, here comes Breno in the big forerunner. Listen to that thing. He's giving it a red hot go. Look at the concentration, look at him. He's white knuckle on the steering wheel, teeth gritted. Listen to that big forerunner, Breno is stoked. <laughs> With that bog hole right behind us, we're heading into a place called Wombat Flats and it's here that we're going to be camping later on tonight. But more importantly, it's where we're going to drop off the GIC because the route from here on to My Natural Wonder isn't going to be camper friendly. Steve is going to set it up quickly and then we'll be back on our way. Struth, there's a massive rut on the left hand side here guys. I'm just going to take this really slowly. A few of you probably noticed that we're back in that creek bed from yesterday. But this time, we're taking one of the different exit points. One that's going to lead us back towards My Natural Wonder. Whoa, that's an off camber. Mate, I think if I try and pop that any further, how close am I to that bank? I can't see. Close, mate. Very close with the front left. Yeah, I'll be coming back there, mate. Uh, go uh, hard right hand down just to miss this log behind you, mate. This is one of those little challenges that really caught us all by surprise. Now, as we came into that creek bed and looked at the exit off to the left, yeah, it looked a bit rutted, but it also looked extremely drivable. I probably could have done, but I certainly would have done panel damage to that left-hand side of the truck. The only way to avoid that, really, 
is to step back, have a bit of a think about it, and do some road building. I'll take it real steady, mate. We'll see how we go, eh? That's the one. Oh, that's a snorkel head. Whoa! I've popped my snorkel head off just trying to give it a red hot go. We're gonna have to yeah, rethink this, take it slowly. Going, going back, mate. That just popped the snorkel head off, that's all it did. Lean over that much, do it. Oh, the tree. I think what it means is a lot more of what we were doing. Walk, walk. Yeah, I can't come over to the right. I can see it now. Um, as high as where this side is here, we basically need to pack that side. So it's definitely doable, it just means The beauty of a creek bed that like this though, is that there's plenty of rocks to choose from. No shortage. You can see just how deep that rut is. I mean, we're putting a whole heap of material in there and it's still taking us a fair while to fill it up. All right, it's always the simple things, isn't it? I thought I'd drive up that, I honestly did. I thought I'd just sail up there, but... Well, as you saw, I didn't. It's just too much of a lean on the left-hand side. Bruno's come up with a fantastic plan. And I reckon if we were to cement over, <laughs> cement over the top of that log, <laughs> you'd build yourself a four-lane superhighway. He's filled in that gap with that great big log that he's carried across and now we're going to pack, as you can see we've got a whole heap of smaller rocks, we're going to pack around that. I have a feeling we'll sail up that and two we'll drive once this is done. Yeah, that big log made all the difference. As you can see, now I'm only bouncing off my tyres on that left hand side as I come up. But if you watch carefully, you'll see my rooftop tent does clip the tree on the way through so there wasn't much in it. What that tells me though, is that the other blokes should be okay. Bruno, just have a look at the front here mate, and tell us where I'm going wrong here. But in the first through, it has a few challenges to it, it's always good to be able to rely on someone to give you a bit of a spot, and in this case, was Bruno just telling me where to go around this corner? I'm just, um, it's not going to go anywhere, just as high as you feel comfortable. Am I, am I going right into a big hole on that side, am I? front left wheel was before. Okay. This will keep you nice and level. And that's the difference between a bit of spotting and trying to do it on your own, mate. I would never have picked to go over to the right then. Mate, I wouldn't have even gone past the water if I was here on my own. <laughs> Righto, Steve-o! Got to have a big Righto, mate, let's just go real slow. You, sometimes you get a bit, you get like a bull of the gate. <laughs> let's just go real slow on this one. Yeah, just a bit of advice there for Steve. You want to I don't think he's going to have that problem. Line. Picking his line well and just slowly crawling his way up that bank. Slowly, 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 let's just go slow. Okay, you crawl up there, mate, no need to go rushing. That's it, mate, see, beautiful. Letting the engine gearing work, and he's just crawled up that. He's made it look easy. Top work, mate. Okay. Yeah, hard right up the bank, mate. It looks a bit weird, but honestly, the difference is chalk and cheese. That's it turning now, mate. Oh, you, Breno? All right, yeah, mate, I'll just line up. Yeah, mate, we are ready to rock and roll. Nice and slow, mate. You can see my line up this log. Beautiful. That's it, I'm loving it already. A little bit over if you want. You're not even, you're not even on the log there. That's it, mate. Gently, gently. Let's not stress those CVs any more than we have to. And that is a textbook climb. Gentle on a throttle, good wheel placement. <laughs> He's nailed it. Perfect stuff, Breno. And then you remember how you guided me? Over to the right, mate. Turning in now, mate. Beautiful work. Just watch that tree up the top, mate. Good ripper. We made it, boys. Not one battle scar, not one breakage. How good's that? And we're approximately 30 metres into the track. <laughs> We've got a big day ahead of us, I think. Whoa, rock steps. I'm going to give it a go. I might need a spot. I'll see how I go. This rock garden we're going through here, absolutely awesome fun to drive. It's about picking your line, going slowly, slowly. Tire pressures play a bit of a part here too, of course. Of note though, these rocks actually have a lot to do with my natural wonder. <laughs> You'll find out why in a minute. Yeah boys, there's another one up ahead. Uh, I might leave this one and I'll come back and just make sure you like okay. So he's playing natural game because you're going to have to pick your own sort of line, but if you follow my tracks, I think you won't go too far Look right, at the mate. angle he gets on there, that is awesome. He's having easy. a blast. Gently up here, mate. 
Oh, you made, you made me look like a bouncing midget. <laughs> that was awesome. Have a go, Breno. You can see Breno's taking it real gentle here. The last thing he wants to do is smash that CV. I mean, yeah, it's a part of four-wheel driving, but what would you rather be doing? Sitting under a truck fixing something or driving these tracks? <laughs> I know which I'd choose. This is where I want to, you know, you've got to be careful. I don't want you to do that CV in country like this. Oh. I think I might be a rear diff there. I caught it. Oh, yeah, you are slightly, but you're over. There we go. That's it, that's it. Now, those rocks link directly to my natural wonder, which is coming right up. But I reckon the boys might try and catch me out on a technicality. Keep going. <laughs> Wait and see. <laughs> Mate, you can't exactly call this a natural wonder. Unless the wombat scratched it out. No, 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 no. <laughs> listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. You're going to need these. You take that one there, mate. Now, listen, hear me out here. This is a gold mine. Fair enough. Yeah, now, it looks like one. You're, you're saying what's a naturally natural. occurring gold mine. <laughs> no, 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 no. But gold is a naturally occurring substance. Yeah? Right. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Have a look at this terrain. It's a wonder they got it out, right? <laughs> so? Oh, you're scratching the surface there, mate. Yeah. Dead set, mate. You brought us all this way for this. Oh, come on, it was good fun. you got to admit it. Yeah, that's true. And this is going to be insanely cool. You want to go have a look? <laughs> it yeah. better be, all right, mate. Let's go I broke look. off my fishing trip for this. <laughs> let's go. Come on. Can't see anything. This is a cracking natural wonder. I don't care what boys. anyone says. I need your torches. Oh, so look, eh? Now watch your heads when you come in here, please. Oh. How cool is this? I mean, literally cool. You drop down in here, we've only come in about 30, 40 metres and already the temperature has gone right down. But for me, coming into a spot like this is like stepping back into a, another place and time. You can only imagine just how hard it would have been. You know, there was a town site just down here, but geez, nothing like the town sites we know today. The conditions in here, ok health and safety, <laughs> non-existent. The blokes that hollowed this out, they really were doing it tough. I hope they found a whole heap of gold. I've had a look, they haven't left anything behind. Really is a natural wonder, as far as I'm concerned, boys. Righto. Gather them up. Watch your heads when you stand up. I don't have to. I'm pretty well right, but for you blokes. <laughs> Lead on. From here, it's only a short drive back to Wombat Flats campsite where we left the GIC earlier. We're quite low down here in a bit of a valley and the one thing I've noticed back at camp is that the temperature's dropped right down. We're going to get a cracking fire going and I think we're going to have a magic night down here at Wombat Flats. Everybody just spends the next half an hour or so just getting their own individual campsite set up the way they want it. Steve-O mentioned on the UHF on the way into camp that he was going to cook tonight, he's the camp chef. So as you can see, he's just getting the kitchen out, all his little bits and pieces. He's going to prepare us one of his delicious pasta dishes. the end of another cracking day and tomorrow it's Breno's turn to show us his natural wonder. Get more for less at Four Wheel Drive Supercenter with insane deals on King's DIY storage and 12 volt gear to build your dream four wheel drive. Whether it's an inverter you need to run 240 volt gear on the job site or the campsite, a battery box or a 12 volt control box to easily access your power. King's 12 volt DIY gear is what you need to take your 12 volt setup to the next level. Need a battery? King's has you covered with a full range of AGM, slimline and lithium batteries in sizes ranging from 98 amp hour to 200 amp hour. All built with ultra high quality components to go the distance. And of course you just can't beat King's solar panels and blankets to silently charge your batteries anytime the sun's out. At Four Wheel Drive Supercenter you get more for less. Not a bad campsite to wake up to and have a look at that, the campfire still going from the night before. Magic stuff.
Here he is, Heston Blumenfold. <laughs> Fresh from Steve-O's Cafe. Mate, thank you very much. Just watch those ants down there. They'll jump in your cup, steal your coffee. Mate, that is a well-made coffee. Got all the right gear to make it. Well, yeah, you have. You've been spending a fair bit of time in that kitchen, which I'm very appreciative of. Cooking away up there, cooking a storm. I noticed yesterday I was giving you a hand to put that trailer up, mate. You haven't really cut any corners on it. No. Well, we've been doing it for 10 years now. Is it 10 a, years? 10 years. Over 10 years. Yeah, right. There's over 10,000 GIC chassis running around the country. We've actually got the new series now, the Black Series, just been released, which okay. is nine models, and three of those are hard floors. Okay. So we've now got a, a complete range with some really good innovations in, in some of the models that people are just going to go crazy for. What's different about this one here then, mate? Well, this one's the Gal Commando. It's double hot dip galvanised. Now, mate, it might be my youthful mind, but that sounds a little bit spicy. Well, what they do is, is the trailer chassis, the whole lot, is dipped into molten gal twice. It's protection against corrosion. Salts, yep. chloride ions, yep. that sort of thing. And gal doesn't chip the same way as paint, so it... Um, it works well to protect the trailer and particularly the chassis. Um, we've dressed up the tailgate, we've put the spare wheel on the tailgate. We've made some tweaks in the suspension. Uh, that one's an eight leaf spring pack, rebound springs with shock absorbers and it works very, very well. Did you get any water in last night? None at all, mate. No? None. No, I've actually put this one of these tents up brand new yeah. in the pouring rain yeah. and not a drop through. So what is that canvas then, mate? The canvas is a combination of cotton and poly yep. with a high degree of cotton in it and it's 18 ounce roof, 15 ounce walls, yep. so it's tough, it's thick, the seams are sealed after they're stitched, yep. it's, yeah, it's a good quality. We, we think this is the best tent in our, in our marketplace at the moment. No, it makes a lot of sense. So I guess my last question to you, Steve, which one are you sending over to WA ready for me to pick up? <laughs> you pick it. <laughs> I always try that and it never works, mate. <laughs> Well, it's Breno's Natural Wonder today, and it seems that we're back in that damn creek bed again. Hey guys, does this track continue across the river? It looks like it, yeah, down the river and across it a bit. Is that about right? Yeah, that's sir, mate. The best part is it's a dead set adventure to get here. <laughs> Righto, if you say so, I'm going in. Yeah, good luck with it. Well, Breno, there's plenty of water here, mate. Well, I guess that goes with the theme. Breno assures me this is the way to go, and Judging by the hemer, it kind of does make sense, and looking in front, across the bonnet, you can see some semblance of a track up through there, but gee whiz, must have been years ago that Breno was down here. No, mate, I'm not going anywhere here. I think you're going to have to win through, mate. I don't think there's any option. On me way, mate. Oh. What have you done? What have I, what have I done? Oh no! Oh! Oh! It's a bit cold! Oh yeah, it's right, it's right up under me pedals. How about we get it out then? I don't know what it's like down there in front of me. Does it, does it dip away more? Yeah, there's no yeah, way I can yeah. drive through here. I think we're just going to try and either winch through or winch backwards. But looking at where Breno is, he's up to his waist in that stuff. I wonder if there's an alternative route. <laughs> Mate, look honestly, it, was, it wasn't like this last time I came through, eh? Right? Famous last words. I don't know, Steve-O, I reckon pull you out backwards, see if we can find a way around it. Bit of a chat with the boys and it's been decided we're going to go backwards and try a different direction. Righto Steve, you got a copy back there mate? Yeah mate, ready to go. Well, Brandon, mate, I don't know about you, but you can see that you can actually see the track as it comes down, does a hard it's left, is there, and continues down that way. But what I suggest has happened to you, mate, because I've been here before to this river, and when I was here, this was just rushing through here. It's no doubt in my mind that track does go back there, but it's been absolutely it obliterated. Mate, she's a bit wet. Yeah, in the last in the last flood. Now there is, well, well, the, yes, is that it's sort of a track, mate. My concern is that if the entry looks like that. <laughs> What's the rest of it going to be like? It's ominous. Look, I've never been on that one. I will say it's going in the right, the right-ish direction. Right. <laughs> I haven't been up there. I don't know what's up there. All right. Well, look. Let's point our noses at it and give it a bell, eh? Sounds good. Fingers crossed. Let's do it. Let's start. 
Breno reckons if we head up this way, it'll link us back up somewhere close to his natural wonder. Now, I've had my eye on this exit point every time we've been down into this creek bed. And I tell you what, it doesn't look any better now than it did on day one. Oh, that is soft. Oh, no. Yeah, it's quite bizarre. There's just no traction there, mate. Better line, a little bit more mumbo, and I tell you what, Shorty just walks up that. I didn't think it was going to because it's so slippery, but what I think I've done is actually spun the crust off the top of that mud, and it's not too bad on me. The other boys are going to walk up that. What a drive! Yeah, buddy! Go the Shorty! Woohoo! Good drive. Oh. I think for once, short wheel base actually helped me then, because I could sort of scoot past. Well, I thought I'd scooted past all the hard bits, but I did not even pick a wheel up. Oh, a little, a little bit. Little tiny yeah. one? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Felt, no, I felt really good. I reckon you're going to kill it. That was an awesome drive. Woo! Right on, you boys. Let's do it. Who's up next? The big fella. Yeah, that's the way, Steve. You made that look easy, mate. Smashed it. That was straight up. <laughs> it doesn't get any bloody easier. I reckon I took all the slippery bits off. Yeah, you're dead right. Exactly what you said. Look at the traction it's there now. Yeah. Mate, you may as well just put it in two-wheel drive. I might just go up in reverse. Bruno has walked up that top stuff. Let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mate, you're showing up now. There was never a doubt. That was easy. Woo. Jolly good. <laughs> yeah, mate. Too easy, eh? Awesome. Well, I don't know what the rest is in for, but... We've come this far. Keep going, Keep going eh? Ah, oh, screw boys. We are straight back into it. Wait till you see these rock steps. Rocky Moses, look at this. Screw. Hey, Breno, Steve, got a copy back there? Yeah, mate. Boys, can you see what I can see? I can see a bucket load of rocks. You got a very big bucket. Do you reckon you blokes could give me a spot through here? I've got a line in mind, I can see a line, but if you blokes could just give us a spot, I reckon that'd be rock and roll. Mate, this is solid. Right hand side, I reckon, just in here. Just yeah, a little okay. yeah, then around that tree and we'll see what's up the top. We'll have a look. No worries, well, I'll go up and keep an eye. We'll, both keep an eye. we'll do some gardening. Rock keep gardening. Rock gardening. <laughs> Can't grow rocks. It went bad for someone here. It's an airlocker that switch. Front airlocker. Man, that's gone seriously bad. Well, don't show me that now! <laughs> <laughs> get out of here! Screw! What do you reckon, Brenner? Up there? Yeah, mate, I reckon straight up here. You're on your uh, drivers up here. Less gonna come up here on these marks. I think just when you come to the top here a little bit right, you're laughing. Hard right now, mate. Just a wee bit back. Turn a little bit of right hand down from here. Get a right hand down? Yeah, a little bit of right hand down. It's just as close as you can to that rock. First up onto these rock steps, and I just don't seem to be able to get my line right. Now, the trick here, mate, is your, uh, your bum's about a foot too far to the right. So the trick here is that we're going to go back. <laughs> Sorry, mate. All right, uh, hard right hand down and back. I'm all sorts of skew with, and I know that if I try and put the throttle down any more than I already am, I'm just going to bounce off line, and that's going to do significant panel damage. Go hard right from there, mate. See if you can draw that one. Should keep that bum away from the rock. Let me let me jump out and have a look. I'm getting pretty close to this tree on this side too. Sorry, mate. I didn't do a very good job of spotting there. No, no, you're right. I'm having fun. Fair enough. Doing a bit of road building here, what we're trying to do is just fill in that hole so maybe I can bounce my way up and onto some more level ground. Have another shot at it, it really looks like I'm going to make it, but for some reason it just doesn't seem to want to go. And as you can see, I keep switching over to that left hand side. Okay, so we're almost there. Just, um, well, I'll repack some rocks at the back here. I reckon that could get real sketchy real quick, Breno. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? 
I just know Shorty, once it starts to fuck around like that, it could go over really easy. Okay, well, look, if you want, if you go hard left and back from here, we can back right out of this and have another, or, another reassess that, or we can winch. We don't need to go far and winch. You know, there comes a point when you've just got to admit it's time to break out the winch. There's an easier way to do this. You pay your money for your winch, why not use it? See how much easier that was with the winch, and it's so controllable as well. You only move slowly when you're winching, so you can make adjustments so much easier than you can when you're under throttle. No panel damage, no damage to the underbody, and I'm up and out of the way. Just watch that side for us, Brenner. Keep it going, mate. That's a perfect line, mate. Steve and the big lux. He was a little bit nervous about that, but he drove it without fault. He made it look easy. In fact, he made it look too darn easy. Oh, love it. Keep going, drive, 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 drive. Yeah. That was a bad drive. Made it look easy. Come on, old girl. Over this way. Brenner's coming up and he's obviously not concerned at all. He's got one hand on the wheel and the other hand on the mic. Left hand down. Yeah, beautiful, mate. Made it look easy. I'll check the other side. No, you're alright. Just going to guide him through here, taking much the same line as myself. Now he's got both hands on the wheel. He's getting serious. Here's the bit that caught me out, but Breno seems to be making this look easy as well. Beautiful, Breno. Look at that, straight up and over. I'm going to call that a wheelbase difference. <laughs> Mate, I feel a little bit defeated on that one. I had to winch up there. Those blokes just made it look like it was the Hume Highway, the M5. Wouldn't even peak our traffic. It's like three in the morning. Just crawled up there. Great challenge. Well, it wasn't for you guys, it was for me. <laughs> we should go and buy something that only short wheel bases can do. I'm going to assault for a while. All right, so I couldn't drive up that rock step, but I've got a bit of an idea where Breno's taken us. And it's another rock step, and there's no way any of us would drive this one. Breno, mate, you've outdone yourself this place, 180 degree views. How good is it? It's stunning, mate. mate. Tinjara Falls, dead set, one of the best places around here. Yeah, you've nailed it on two fronts. Had to be natural, had to be a wonder. It was both. Yeah, you've done it. You've absolutely scored it. But getting here, mate, what, are you some sort of masochist? <laughs> Look, I know people say there's probably an easy way to get here. Where's the fun in that? Mate, there is an easier way to get here. There's a great big highway that comes straight <laughs> down past it, but... What, you would have missed out on that epic river crossing? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, got yeah. a little bit wet. Those massive uh, hill climbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, you had it all, and now you've brought us to this. You've absolutely smashed it, mate. That's it. This is my natural wonder. Well, I'll give you 10 out of 10. What do you think we're going to have a closer look? Sounds pretty good. All right, let's go. do it. They haven't had enough rain out this way for Tianjara Falls to be flowing yet, but I have seen photos of this place when it is in full cascade and it is spectacular. As you can imagine, there are waterfalls all over this rock face with one main one directly in the middle. Despite the lack of water flowing over the edge, this place is still spectacular. Great choice, Breno. Top natural wonder, mate. Well, we've all had a go at showing off some of Mother Nature's finest works. And you know what? They were all within about 30 k's of one another. But for us, we had to choose just one that we thought was the best. And we're heading back there right now to enjoy it one last time. I rate this trip 100% successful. We achieved exactly what we set out to do, that is to drive some of the most challenging tracks this place has to offer. But at the same time, we also chose our favourite natural wonders. And well, what we came up with is that Steve's right here on the Shoalhaven River, that took it out. Between you and me though, I reckon walking through a 50 year old gold mine is pretty darn special. Got to admit, Shoalhaven River down here, look at these cliffs, spectacular. We've still got a bit of time down here, we're going to enjoy it. Might see you down here, might not, but I'll definitely see you next time on four wheel drive action. Forget building your own set of storage drawers or paying well over $1,000 for a set elsewhere. And get your hands on a set of incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money, Titan Storage Drawers. Our entire range of Titan Storage Drawers have been built to handle just about anything you can throw at them. 
All models of Titan Double Drawers come with an included built-in fridge slide on the left-hand side, saving you up to $200 compared to some other brands that charge extra for a fridge slide. Each draw top also has these heavy-duty spring-loaded tie-down points to secure your gear on even the most corrugated roads. We've put them through their paces like none other. We've jumped on them, overloaded them with bricks, chucked an engine on the drawers at full extension, absolutely flooded them and used them off-road year after year to prove just how tough they are. The Titan 900 single drawer is perfect for those who have limited space to install a storage drawer. It has internal dimensions of 430 millimeters wide, 790 millimeters long, and 190 millimeters deep. The Titan 900 double drawer setup is ideal for smaller wagons like Prados, Pajeros, and SUVs, with the internal dimensions identical to the 900 single drawer on each side. The Titan 1300 ute drawers are made specifically for vans and utes. The internal dimensions are 1200 millimeters long, 430 millimeters wide, and 150 millimeters high. The 1300mm single drawers are also a cracking addition to the back of vans and utes. The internal dimensions are the same as the double 1300 drawers, but have an extra 40mm of depth, making them 190mm deep. And finally, for the bigger wagons like Land Cruisers and Patrols, the double 1070 storage drawers have internal dimensions of 880mm long, 470mm wide, and 180mm of depth. They come 95% pre-assembled, and all you need to install them is a couple of basic hand tools and a couple of hours on a lazy Sunday Arvo. You can also add optional wing kits, both model specific and DIY. So you can finish off the back of your four wheel drive and have plenty of storage available for your next adventure. Take your setup to the next level with the incredibly tough and unbeatable value for money Titan Storage Drawers. If you're after a next level 12 volt upgrade for your vehicle or your next camping trip, then check this out. The Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. This uses high capacity, brand new grade A lithium iron phosphate cells capable of thousands of cycles. It's paired with a high quality BMS able to output up to 160 amps of current. The future of 12 volt setups is here. Lithium batteries are super lightweight and still have heaps of power capacity. In fact, this battery weighs just over 15 kilos. That's about half as much as a similar capacity AGM. But that's not all. Lithium batteries have the ability to use their entire capacity from 100 to 0% and still have an incredibly long life. The reason Adventure King's lithium batteries are so good is because they use lithium iron phosphate chemistry. That means if you're using the entire 120 amp hours of capacity in this battery every day, it would still last almost five and a half years. Some cheap lithium batteries use grade B or even secondhand cells to keep the cost down, but not here. Adventure King's lithium iron phosphate batteries use brand new grade A prismatic cells. When these batteries are assembled, each individual cell is matched with others and then grouped. Then those cells are balanced, which means that these batteries always function at their best and ensure you have full capacity. Another major feature of these Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium batteries is the high quality internal battery management system. This BMS for short takes care of the individual cells. It balances them while you're charging your battery. It prevents overcharge, over discharge, over temperature and short circuits. A high quality BMS is so important and it's also incredibly important to match the BMS to the cells and the use of the battery. A good indicator of a high quality BMS is to look for high current discharge and charge ratings. This battery is capable of charging and discharging constantly at up to 100 amps and it can do a peak discharge of 160 amps of current. A high discharge current and a high peak discharge current are very important if you want to run things like inverters that need a lot of power when they turn on to fill the capacitors. If you're looking at a battery that has a much lower charge and discharge rate, they could be cost cutting by using a cheaper BMS. Lithium iron phosphate is a safe technology, unlike some other lithium chemistries, and Adventure King's lithium batteries are doubly safe. Not only are they sealed and safe to use in your vehicle, they've also passed a short circuit test, overcharge test, over temperature test, and a vibration test. So they're ready to be put to use. 
Some lithium batteries are extremely sensitive to hot and cold temperatures, and they can be damaged or destroyed by trying to use them. Adventure King's batteries, though, can be charged anywhere from zero to 50 degrees Celsius, and used or discharged anywhere from negative 20 right through to plus 60 degrees Celsius. They use threaded M8 terminals for high power output and easy connection. Measuring it at 330 millimeters long by 162 millimeters wide and 215 millimeters tall, they fit perfectly in an Adventure King's battery box for a lightweight and powerful portable power station. And with 120 amp hours on tap, you could run a camping fridge for five or even six days. Or you can permanently install them in your vehicle for a next level, super powerful setup that barely weighs anything. And for that reason, they're perfect for your full drive, motorhome, caravan, or camper trailer, where you need to be concerned about GVM and GCM limits. So if you want a safe, lightweight, super powerful, and super long lasting lithium battery for your next level setup, you can't beat an Adventure King's 120 amp hour lithium battery. Introducing the incredible Adventure King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. Your new best mate for delicious barbecue or campfire cooking and warm, cozy fires whether you're at home in your backyard or at your favorite campsite. Let me show you all the things that I absolutely love about it and I'm sure you're gonna love too. This amazing bit of gear has been designed right here in Australia and it combines a camping stove and a portable barbecue into one. It can run off multiple fuel sources, wood, heat beads, charcoal, briquettes, and more. When it's time to cook up a feast, you can fit two large pots or pans on this huge flat cooktop surface that measures in at 520 millimeters long by 300 millimeters wide. That's enough space to cook up a feast for the entire family. And because it runs on wood or heat beads, you can leave the gas bottle behind, one less thing to pack. And when you want a beautiful roaring campfire, use the included hook tool to simply lift the two piece lid off completely and just add in some more firewood. The raised and closed design means you won't risk scorching your grass, your deck, or even your driveway. And you'll be able to use it for a beautiful warm fire at campsites that don't allow open ground fires. Plus your firewood lasts longer because you're closer to the heat. Now that's cozy. The enclosed design means it's super efficient and you can make the most of your fuel by directing the heat exactly where you want it. You can even adjust the temperature of your fire by varying the airflow. With these sliding vents on the side, a two-piece removable lid on top and an adjustable flue, you're always in control. Remove the entire lid for an open fire or just this circular inner piece if you need extra heat for cooking, like searing steaks to finish them off. And this up here, now that is a real game changer. A chimney that extends over 2.4 meters off the ground to direct smoke away from your campsite for smoke-free campfires. You can even position the premium camp oven stove under your awning, your gazebo, or your shed for maximum warmth. And the angular offset chimney piece allows smoke to funnel away rather than getting trapped underneath. There's even a spark arrestor on top for good measure. There are so many more things to absolutely love about the King's Premium Camp Oven Stove. It's been designed to be super sturdy with these four large legs that extend the footprint a foot wider in both directions for excellent stability. The legs simply screw into the bottom like this and you can remove the middle piece for a lower fire. This huge access door swings open with the included hook tool to allow you to easily refill the Premium Camp Oven Stove as required. Inside, you've got this fuel rack that keeps your wood or your charcoal up off the floor, maximizing airflow and preventing wasted heat. It's a breeze to transport, set up and pack down too, with no tools required. Each of the four two-piece legs simply screw together and the chimney pieces pack into each other, with everything fitting into the main body of the premium camp oven stove for simple transport. Make sure you don't miss the incredible genuine cooking accessories available too, like a proper wood-fired meat smoker and a clever barbecue hot plate set to really take your camp cooking to the next level. And a stainless steel water boiler too. Whether I'm at home in my backyard or out camping with family, my mates, or even by myself, I absolutely love my Adventure King's premium camp oven stove. It's a portable fire pit, it's a wood or charcoal barbecue, and it's the centerpiece of every backyard get together or camping adventure, and I know you're gonna love yours too.
you asked and we've listened. The incredible MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer has just received an ATM upgrade to two tonnes. All new Adventure Kings MT1 camper trails will now come with the new upgraded two tonne ATM. But don't worry if you already own an MT1, because a retrofit upgrade kit is available too. The MT1 is already an ultra tough trailer with a one piece 150 by 50 mil chassis that extends right from the drawbar all the way to the back of the trailer. Now it's even tougher with upgraded suspension, bearings, brakes and wheels to bring it up to a two ton ATM. The brakes are upgraded from 10 inch to 12 inch electric brakes. The alloy rims are now rated to two ton ATM and an upgraded set of suspension arms also suit the upgraded ATM. And for existing owners, the retrofit upgrade is incredibly easy to do at home yourself. Everything just bolts onto the trailer with no modifications needed. That extra payload capacity means that you've got more ability than ever before to carry the gear that you need and still remain legal. For more information and full detailed specs on the MT1, see the Four Wheel Drive Supercenter website. Now with a two ton ATM upgrade, the Adventure Kings MT1 Go Anywhere camper trailer can carry more gear than ever before.